Hi, I'm Paul, and I'm the lead research technician here at the uh, Hot Linux Research Labs, and I'm also the uh, the administrator of the Pop OS Linux Facebook group on Facebook. Today's video is how to install the Wine compatibility layer on Pop OS Linux 22.04. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here's my Pop OS 22.04, and I'm going to install Wine Compatibility Layer Command Line Engine version 8 on this so I can run dot Windows dot .exe files in a Linux environment. Okay? So, okay, so I'm going to go to the terminal first, and I'm going to just quickly show you that I am actually indeed in a pop OS environment okay here's my NeoFetch with the artwork and then the particulars here pop OS 22.04 LTS and um, the kernel 646 and that's pretty much about it I just want to show you that I am actually in a pop environment okay so I can go ahead and clear on that now I want just uh, so that I don't have wine already installed on my system. So once we're done adding the um, the, the key and the repo, and then uh, installing wine, then we're going to come back here and check the version again. And then at that point, we'll get a version uh, version. More than likely, it'll, it'll be a eight point something or another. Another. You can see here the the version um, in the in the um, the pop repos with uh, apt. Are definitely a couple of uh, major versions behind, so I I wouldn't really recommend this. Better to go with the newest version. That's always better. So yeah, six. I mean it's convenient. You know, apt install wine, but I mean it's just a couple of major ticks behind. So there's a better way of installing it. Okay. So when we install it, we'll come back and check the version again. But we're we're clear there for now. And then also, I'm not sure if it's going to install anything GUI-wise. I don't think so. But as you can see, I don't have anything installed already for Wine. So I don't think it's going to install a front end. There, there are other um, GUI programs or front ends that, that you can install separately. But I don't think when we when I install the, the Wine command line engine, it's going to install anything in a GUI sense. So, But you can see nothing's here. And we'll come back and just uh, double check it when we're done. Okay? Okay, so there's a few different uh, ways of installing uh, Wine on Pop OS. One is through the the Pop. Also, you know the APT of the terminal. I showed you that, right? Let's uh, take another quick look here. You can um, do it with the APT package manager. Pretty straightforward here. Sudo APT install Wine. Okay, we're not going to do that. And you can also go to the Pop Shop. And there's a couple. This is probably this is um the same same pretty much the same thing that you would do with APT, except it would be the same thing. It would be 6.0 or whatever. And I'm not sure what version this would be, but it would be unstable. So I wouldn't really do that anyway. I'm not sure what version of would it be the most current unstable version or would it be uh, an older. Yeah, see, I'm not sure about that one. Probably the most current one, I would think. I don't know. But it's development, so it would be kind of beta, unstable testing or whatever. And I would just kind of try to steer clear of, of that. Unless you really know you need uh, its you know newer features and whatnot. Otherwise, I would just go with the stable. Okay, so you can do it those two ways on pop. You can also, uh, yeah, there's no snap package or um, app image package. There is a flat pack, and I've taken a look at that page, and I'll post that uh, link for uh, uh, wine on Flathub in my description, or in, in, you know, in the video notes in the description uh, area. And uh, that's probably pretty good too, except it's not. Um, it's not the it's not officially maintained by 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 the wine developers, so it's more of a community based or uh, you know community. Uh, created based and supported uh, package of wine so you know it's not 
I, I would just probably forego that. And of course, then you can also have some problems with Wine accessing your your system, your file system, because uh, it's in a flat pack and it could be sandboxed, and you'd have to use a flat seal to allow privileges and, and permissions and whatnot. So it could be a little bit more. Uh, it just it's probably not the the way I would recommend going because it's unofficial for one. And it's um, you know it's in a flat pack uh, format, package format, and that could pose its own um, issues to deal with once you start using it. So I would definitely just go with the um, the official Wine HQ uh, package for uh, for Pop. You can uh, it's also kind of based on Ubuntu anyway. So Ubuntu Pop is kind of the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and um, install Wine. On my pop with the uh, the official uh, Wine HQ package. So, okay, so we're gonna have to do some preparation first before we can get into actually adding, uh, downloading, and adding the repository key. So, back with the first step. Okay, so the first step is a a, prep, a, prep, a preparation step. And if your system is 64-bit, which it probably is, uh, we're going to um, have to enable 32-bit uh, architecture support. So I guess uh, if we need to run a 32-bit exe file in Wine, because I think it might only just do a 64-bit out of the box. So we have to add, normally on a 64-bit system outside of Wine, like you know, just on bare metal, a Windows or Linux or Mac or whatever, 64-bit would probably just run a 32-bit program out of the box. But I guess Wine is a little different that we have to add 32-bit support separately. So that's what this line here does. So key this in a sudo a d package add architecture, and then we're going to add 32-bit support, which is pretty much what I386 uh, stands for. So once you've keyed that in, let's go ahead and enter on that. Okay, no output. I wasn't really knowing whether I was going to expect any kind of output or not. But uh, since there's no errors, I'm going to go ahead and assume that we've added 32-bit uh, support. And we can move on to the next section, or the next step, which would be the, uh, to add the um, download and add the repository key. Then after that, we can go ahead and um, continue on with the next couple of steps of, uh, of installing of installing the um, the repo and then using apt to install wine so back with the next step okay so the first step the first step uh, the first um, sub step in step two is um, to for uh, downloading and adding the repository key is to make a directory where we're going to uh, store the the um the key so we're gonna make a directory here in this path here and it's gonna have these permissions here I'm not sure what the PM is actually that's kind of I've kind of seen that from the, some of the first time here actually gotta look that up on my own later but the the directory will have these uh, permissions here RWX for uh for uh, for the user and then uh, Five would be uh, read and execute, but no write. And five would uh, for uh, for the for group, for the group uh, owner. And then uh, same thing for all others. Uh, they would have f four would be a uh, read, but no write. And then execute would be one. So that's four and one is five. So for these two sets here, only read and read and execute, but no write. So they can't change nothing. They can look at it and run it, but they can't. They can't, you know, uh, edit or alter or change anything. And then for the user, they can do everything: read, write, and execute. So once you key that in, enter on that, okay. And uh, let's see if uh, let's see where it is here. Where's that key rings? I think. Actually, it would be here in this path here. Well, we can take a look real quick, I suppose. Here, let's just see what uh, what it did. Okay.
okay here's the folder that we just created and it should be empty okay yeah okay so that wasn't created that wasn't already um, that didn't already exist on my pop OS installation here so this was this path has been created here Etsy apt key rings so we're in that um, that folder here key rings and I did an LSA and it's empty and clear okay so that's good and then we're gonna probably uh, it's probably going to be used to uh, store the um, the key once we download the key. So back with that step next. Okay, so I did a CD and I went back to the um, to the user folder, and in the user folder we're going to key in this kind of a lengthy command here, sudo, and yet they have this wget uh, download utility installed on your system. On uh, on Debian Ubuntu pop uh, based uh, distros, it would be I believe off, it would top of my head it would be uh, sudo apt install wget pretty simple, pretty simple four word command there to install wget. Okay, so once you have wget on your system, if it's not already there, install it. Then uh, we can we can use it to download the key and store it in that key rings folder or uh, directory that that we just created. So a little quick breakdown here. It's going to download the key from this URL here, and it's going to store it in that that path that we created before. This is that key rings folder, and it's going to store it as this file here, winehq-archive.key. So it's going to take this key here and store it here. It's going to take this key uh, from the remote server, and it's going to install it locally in this path here. Okay. So once we key that in, we'll enter on that, and it's going to go through some process here. You can see it connected to that URL. I got 200 HTML or HTTP code back, which means that it was able to hit that server and download the key, and it saved it in that location here, and we'll check that in a moment here. Okay, so everything looks good there. We'll clear on that, and I'm going to go ahead and CD back into that other path that I was in before and let's see okay good see this key wasn't there before it is now okay good so we have the key installer in our system so I can CD out of there go back to the user folder and clear on that and I'm all set for the um, for the next step which is actually d downloading the um, the wine source file Okay, so we're going to go ahead and download the uh, the Wine HQ sources file. Now I'm not sure why it's termed sources file when we're not actually be going to be compiling from source. We're not going to actually be compiling Wine from source like you would on any other distro that you want to you know compile it on or like on Arch or whatever. So I don't know why it's actually called the sources file, but that's what it actually the extension here is sources file. Although we're not going to on pop we're not going to actually compile it with um, you know the traditional way of uh, building and compiling and installing a program from source but it's a, a dot sources extension so um, little little uh, tricky there their documentation so but when, once we do this here then we'll have three um, choices um, on how to install wine stable a development or staging I guess this gives us the uh, the, the 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 um that flexibility of um, choosing um, the different wine packages. But I'm, again, I'm not really quite sure why it's sources when we're not actually compiling from source. Um, so anyway, a little quick breakdown here. Yeah, it's going to take um, the sources file there, and it's going to you know here remotely here where uh, with the hyperlink with on, on the uh, the underline there, and it's going to take that remote file and it's going to install it locally here in this path here again with the sudo session wget utility and then it's going to install it locally here in this in this path here it's going to add it to our to our sources list repo essentially so that apt can pull from it okay so it's going to take that and put it into our local sources list here repo source list here then apt can um, be aware of it and pull and, and you know uh, install wine from from that repo 
once we update APT. So we'll, we'll go ahead and key on that. Enter on that. Okay, a quick little look here. Everything connected looks like 200. That's good. And it saved, it saved that sources file to our local file system in the sources.list here. Okay, that looks good. Okay, everything looks good there. So I can go ahead and clear on that. And then keep the video rolling here. Now APT, no, the, the repo has been added to our sources list. But APT at this point probably doesn't know about it. So if you used APT to install Wine, it probably would fault because it's, APT hasn't been updated. Its cache hasn't been updated. So it, APT doesn't know that that repo actually exists for it to pull from. So we have to just do a standard APT update command here. And then this was here before, even before we did the... Um, this update, but it didn't know about it. Even though it was in the list, it didn't know about it. Now it knows about it. So you can see right here the wine, the wine repo here. Now, oh, and there's a couple other ones too for it to pull from. So it'll pull from whichever repo, depending on how we want to install wine, what version, what architecture we have, and whatnot. Okay, uh, this is something to do with Brave. Okay, so at this point. You saw that, you know, APT now knows about that repo that it could pull from. And you could also, so you can go navigate to the, the sources file in your file system in the terminal. And you can also go to pop shop here and go to the repo manager here. And go ahead and minimize that real quick. And go to extra sources and you could see that it's been added right here it's added and been enabled so this is like a, a GUI way of uh, managing your um, your uh, source repos on pop okay and then you can also go there in the file manager in the GUI or in the terminal and uh, navigate to that uh, sources um, that sources file and and um, work with it there in the terminal or in the in the in the in the GUI file manager there. Okay, so we added the repo to our sources list and we updated APT to be aware that it could pull from that repo now. Okay, so everything's been um, prepared, all the groundwork is done. Now we can go ahead and use APT to install Wine. Now there's three um, there's three packages to choose from. There's the stable branch, the development branch, and the staging branch. I'm just going to go with the stable branch. We don't need development or staging. We don't need to have all the, the new stuff, um, the new features, which are probably cool. But, you know, again, these are like unstable and they're testing and, and beta and all that kind of stuff. So I would just go with the stable branch. Stable, the stable branch of the most current version is probably pretty much where you want to be. Okay, so back with the... Um, the command, the apt command to install the stable branch of wine on pop os. Okay, let's go ahead and install wine with apt. And here's the command here sudo apt install. And we're going to install the stable branch here, stable branch version here. So once you have all this keyed in here, Hopefully this will work and uh, it will install Wine 8 on our Pop! OS Linux installation. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and enter on that. Okay, there's a lot of output here. I'm going to give it a quick little look here. We don't need to look at everything. It's going to install a lot of um, a lot of additional packages. We Forget the suggested ones for now. Just to let it install whatever it's going to install. You know, there's a lot to look at, so we can just kind of skip over it real quick. But everything looks like it's been staged pretty good, and we're ready to go ahead and install Wine. Okay, so do you want to continue? It's going to, you know, uh, install 1,500 megabytes worth of, so it's like what, a, a, a gig and a half or whatever worth of stuff here. Okay, that's not too much. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and 
it says capital Y, I can go small Y, so we're going to go yes. Do I want to continue yes? So we'll, we'll key in the Y, enter on that, and let it download and install Wine on Pop OS Linux 22.04. And I'll be back when it's done, and we'll check the version and a few other things. Okay, that took a, a couple of minutes to um to to uh, download and unpack and install Wine. Okay, so you can see everything outputted properly. No no errors. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, clear on that, and back with a couple more final steps. Okay, Wine has been installed. Okay, remember we did that um, that Wine dash dash version command before. Let's go back and look for that. Let me um, arrow through my history, my command history here real quick. Okay, okay, this is what we did before. Nothing came up. Let's see what comes up this time. Okay, good. Right where we want to be. Wine 802 stable. Okay, great. This is perfect. Okay, we'll clear on that and we'll look for any GUI that was added. I don't think there was going to be anything added GUI wise. Just to, just out of curiosity, take a quick little look here. I don't see anything wine related here. Okay, yeah, nothing here. All right. Like I said, we can uh, install other um, wine helper GUI programs and, and uh, wine front ends and whatnot. But as of right now, we just have the Wine command line engine installed. Okay, so that's pretty much about it. Let's say, let's say you've downloaded. So yeah, we checked them. Um, you know, we checked uh, the version, and there's no, there's no GUI, and we checked the. Okay, so everything's fine here in, in the command line and the GUI part. Okay, so one last thing remains: how to use it, right? Okay, you're on Linux here, Pop OS, and you've downloaded. A .exe file for Windows on to your into your file system. Okay, you went you used a browser, you downloaded a .exe file, and it saved it in your download folder. Okay, so you go to your download folder. It's not here. I don't I don't have anything to actually test it with, but you just um, navigate in your uh, terminal to wherever that exe file lives you spot it you know you would spot it so let's say here there's a xxx.exe file okay so pretty simple just use wine here it's on the path so you can be anywhere you could be any, anywhere in the file system it's on the path it's been added to the path um, environment uh, variable already which means you don't have to go to the wine folder or whatever to run wine you could run it anywhere in your file system but I do believe you'd have in the, you don't have to be in the folder where the the uh, the .exe file lives either if you're somewhere where it's not living then you have to give it the absolute path otherwise if you're in the same folder you can just use the relative path or just you know pass it directly in since you're already in the full uh, the, the directory where the exe file lives so that would be like absolute path, relative path, or just, you know, you run it wherever you're at. If you're, if you're CD'd into the directory directly where the, uh, the path, I guess that would be a, a relative path as well. Anyway, so let's say here we're in download folder, we downloaded a .exe file, and we've CD'd, CD'd into the download folder, okay? We can use one anywhere. And we've downloaded into the um, folder where the uh, .exe file lives, so we don't have to give it an absolute path. So all we have to do is just spot it and just um, and just pass it in like this. It's not going to work here. I won't. I won't run it. Obviously, it's not going to work. So you you find the .exe file, whatever, whatever, whatever .exe, pass it into Wine, and enter on that. And you know, there's no guarantees it's going to work. This is pretty much the basic. This is pretty much what you should do to give yourself the best chance of, of getting it. Now you might see something about mono, installing mono. I haven't really read up on that too much. Uh, it says to try, it recommends to have your distro package manager install that. I just let it 
install whatever it has. Um, you can also just do whatever it recommends if you see that screen and try to install it through your package manager. Otherwise, just let um, let Wine let your Wine installation provide that that mono file or whatever for you. And um, that's pretty much about it. You just pass the exe file in, enter on that, and and hope that it works. One last bit of advice is to uh, go to the um, and I'll post this in the in the description video description field. Uh, there's a plate. There's a tab on the um, the Wine HQ uh, web page uh, called uh, AppDB, where you could um, click on that and you could see what's the best combination of the Wine version for whatever version of the ex of the uh, the .exe file you're trying to trying to run. So you might have to go to an earlier version of Wine and or you know change your version of your program. So that's the AppDB. Like a wine database, uh, to see you know to make sure uh, that you get the best wine wine version and you know wine version for whatever version of the exe the exe program you're trying to run. Okay, so that's pretty much about it. Clear on that. Go back to the home here and leave you with. Neil fetch again here, okay. Pop OS Linux 22.04, okay. So, so that was how to install the, the Wine command line engine 8 on Pop OS Linux 22.04. And so I showed you how to, you know, go through all the steps of installing it and verifying the installation and then how to run an exe file and some and some things to consider. Okay, so I'm Paul, and I am the lead research technician at the uh, How to Linux Research Labs, and I am also the uh, the administrator of the uh, Pop OS Linux Facebook group on Facebook. And I want to thank you for uh, subscribing, you know, for subbing, and for watching. And uh, I look for and I thank you, and I look forward to your comments and your feedback. And um, if you have any requests for any future videos, uh, drop a note in the, um, you know, make a comment on the video, and I'll try to get to it. Okay, uh, thank you for watching, and until my next video, bye-bye. Thank you.